My name is Oli. I'm a software developer from Berlin, Germany. Um, I work there for a company called Door to Door. And I'd like to present you one of our projects. It's called Track Your City. And it's about um, yeah, sourcing public transport data in regions where there is no public transport data. Um, before I go deeper into the topic, how we do this actually, I'd like to give you just a general overview about why we need this data and kind of in what kind of industry we work and what's our perspective on our industry. For this, I want to go back a few years. Um, you guys probably all remember him. Um, I don't put him there to confirm all stereotypes about Germans. Um, I rather want to um, emphasize something else. Um, when you look at him, he kind of has two things. He has a smartwatch who he can talk to and he has a self-driving car. So back then it was really cool. Um, now a few years later we have all these things. So we have a smartwatch, we can talk to it, and we basically have self-driving cars. <laughs> um, so lo lots of things changed. Now I want to like look at our industry, or my, the industry I work in, which is the public transport industry. So at the top you see the um, metro in Berlin, the U1. Um, not much happened there since the 80s. Um, at the bottom left you see a taxi in Berlin. Um, this got heavily disrupted in the last few years by Uber. There was a lot of change. And also the individual transport, the cars, um, got quite a bit of influence by car sharing. Um, but again, the public transport companies, if you look at this bus, um, a bus in London in the 80s, and if you look at this bus, a bus in London today, it looks very different. It looks a lot cooler, smarter, and it's probably a little bit more comfortable, but the basic concept is still the same. The, um, both buses have fixed stops, they have fixed timetables. It's basically the internet and data didn't happen. And that's exactly where we want to step in as a company, and we want to change this. Um, our vision is we want to bring to the world on-demand public transport anywhere in the world. So not only in Berlin, not only in the US, also in Africa. And that's why I want to speak about Track Your City and in the city and also in, on the countryside. What is on-demand public transport? Um, what do we understand under this? I want to show you a little video that explains the concept um, a little bit further. Yeah, this is more as a, a long vision of the company and um, where we want to go. The reason why we want to this, do this is pretty obvious for us and probably also for you. We want to reduce traffic jams. Um, we want to reduce emissions in cities. We want to remove parking spaces. And we want to have better commutes. We want them to be more productive, more fun, and more enjoyable. Um, for this, um, I want to explain you our ecosystem to kind of show you how we want to get to a system like this. And in this ecosystem, there are basically three steps. The first step is um, a mo mobility app. Um, so we um, have a, an app, it's called Ali App. It, works, it doesn't work in Seattle, unfortunately, but it works in Europe and in parts of Africa and South America. It, yeah, it basically tells you how to get from A to B with different um, public transport options. The second component in this ecosystem is um, our mobility analytics. So the app serves for us as a sensor to produce insights where we learn how a city works. So from where to where are people moving, where are major clusters in a city where people move. And then the last step, once we understand how a city works, um, we apply this data and bring on-demand mobility into the city. So that's kind of these three steps. And I'm going to go in all three of them a little bit now. First one is the app, and that's how it looks like. 
Um, this, uh, the coverage is, yeah, as I said, yeah, mainly around Europe here, and we have a strong focus in South America, and we're also starting to work in, in Africa. Now, this ecosystem, at the beginning of the ecosystem, we want to launch an app in the city. And in North America, this would be quite easy. We go to the public transport authority and they provide this data as open data. It's the same in Germany and Europe. Um, all this data is publicly available. Um, this is very different in South America and Africa. Um, there we were facing the problem. There is simply no, no data. A bunch of people reached out to us. Hey, I think your idea of on-demand transport is cool. Can we do this here in our city? And we're like, oh yeah, this is very interesting. Um, but we quickly realized there's simply no data available, not even on OpenStreetMap. So you might have roads on OpenStreetMap, but you don't have public transport um, data available. Um, that's why we launched Track Your City um, as a separate project from the company. Um, yeah, what it basically is, um, we want to help communities um, to track their own public transport system. So if people in a city think, hey, our public transport system sucks, we want to improve that, my daily commute is horrible, um, we want to help them to get to a better public transport system. And as a first step of this, you always have to do an analysis, what is the current state? What, what, where are the current buses going? Where are the current bus stops? And yeah, how does this work? The first city where we, where we did this um, was Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So most pictures that you're going to see are, are there in, in Tanzania. Um, Tracker City has kind of three steps. Um, the first step is you organize a community. So people that are willing to, to put in some work to improve their city. Um, they don't have to be like the biggest techies, um, but they have to have an interest in mapping. The second step is really simple. We're going to track the whole public transport system in a city. Um, by using a smartphone. And then the third step is we clean up all this data and put it into OpenStreetMap, make, make it publicly available to everyone. We as a company then take it out again and use it in our app, um, but anyone else can use it. I'm going to walk you through all these three steps a little further. So um, the first step is building the community. Here in the middle you see Isabel. Um, she, was, she wanted to come, but it didn't work out in the end, so she's the project manager of Track Your City, and she's really skilled in building communities and helping people to, to do Track Your City. So ideally, we only help people to do Track Your City, um, give them the tools, give them some advice, but they run it themselves. Um, it's a project for them. And yeah, um, what we do at the beginning when we like create a community, we do a lot of education. So we give them advice what kind of apps to use. So here at the bottom left, you see a, a tutorial um, Emily made. Um, so we use this app called OSM End. Um, some of you might have heard that, to track the routes. And in the next step, that's the most important thing. We create a list of all the routes that we want to track. Um, this sounds really simple, um, but it's really difficult, actually. Most cities, they have no inventory at all in Africa what, um, what bus routes there are. So this is a lot of work in the beginning to find out what do we actually want to track. And, but we put a lot of um, emphasis on this. Hey, it's really important that we have an overview of what we want to track. Um, in order to know when we're done and to have clean data in the end. Once we're done with this list, we work um, with the community on an editing policy. So what kind of tags do we want to use and how do we want to put this into OpenStreetMap? We usually give some advice and then we discuss with local people what they think is better. So because they ultimately have the knowledge what kind of tags they should use and we don't want to just put our Berlin approach on top of, on top of them. Yeah, and then um, here in the video, you see Emily going out to the bus, tracking the routes, and then in the end, putting it on, on OpenStreetMap. So what OSMN does, it um, load, uploads the data to OSM Traces, and then in the next step, we use ID Editor to edit the data. Um, yeah, here's, so once we establish the community, explain things, how it works, um, we send out the students. Um, so they go out. This is now a small animation in Dar es Salaam, the first city where we did and yeah, slowly people get in the buses and start tracking all these buses. And Dar es Salaam, they actually call Dala Dalas, which I think is a funny name. So you see one here at the top left, there are these small mini buses. And yeah, we tracked in Dar es Salaam over 300 routes. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work, but in the end we had them all together. Um, but it was messy data. And so our first run was quite horrible. Um, we learned a lot of things in the first phase. So people turned on the GPS at their house instead of at the bus stop. So things like this. So it was learnings for us um, that we can now apply to other cities where we're going to run this. Um, and then the third step in the system, all the buses are tracked. And we have to bring it into OpenStreetMap. And that's actually the, 
um, the most complicated step. Um, most um, most people that work with us have never done, have never worked with OSM. Uh, it's completely new for them, so we have to do a lot of education there. We recommend to them to use the ID editor, which we think is a little easier to use than Chasm, um, but they oftentimes get quite frustrated there. So we, what we do is like we say, hey, go out, track one bus route, and then we put it into OpenStreetMap with you, just that they get the first feeling really quick. And then once there's one bus route in OpenStreetMap, we can already launch our app. And that gives them a really cool feeling. So they go out, track a route, and immediately this data is available in a public transport app. And this kind of motivates them to keep on going and track the other routes. What we also do then, as soon as data goes into OpenStreetMap, we have like this small pipeline that analyzes the data they put in there. And we give them feedback if they use the tags um, that we agreed on, or if they use different tags, if the geometry is valid or invalid. So they always get these little, um, feedback reports that help them to find potential mistakes. So we make sure at the end of the project, all the data is clean and open street map. Yeah, we did this now in three cities, Dar es Salaam, Lusaka, and Tijuana. Um, the next one is Quito right now, I think. That's what we work on right now. And they're all really interesting cities. So like Dar es Salaam, you have an average commute time of two hours. Um, Isabel and I went there actually, and it's insane. People spend so much time on these daladalas going from A to B. Yeah, and we really um, want to improve this. First step is to get the data. The next step um, is the mobility analytics. So here you see a map. So we have now all the data. We can now analyze um, what does this mean for a city. So you see here um, a BRT bus system, and we can analyze with data actually, um, data that Tyler earlier referenced in, in his presentation that HUD OSM digitized. And we can now analyze who can access this BRT route what hospitals can be accessed with public transport. Um, so we can do different analysis. Here's an al analysis from Berlin. Um, what you see here is the accessibility to Tegel Airport. So the red area um, is the area that people can reach Tegel Airport within 30 minutes. So the dark red is 15 and the lighter red is 30 minutes. So that you see the majority of the city cannot go to the airport within 30 minutes. So this is the supply data and that's what the public transport system offers. And through the data, we can now look who actually wants to go to Tegel Airport. So these areas, the dark red areas on this heat map, are the areas where people want to go um, to Tegel. So you see supply and demand doesn't really match up here. So it's just one example how we can analyze data to bring them in the third step um, to improve the public transport system um, with this on-demand mobility. Um, yeah, that's the third step of the, of the cycle. And that's what the company actually works right now on really heavily to bring this on-demand um, bus system in Berlin on the ground. And then once we have it in Berlin on the ground and have some first experiments, we're gonna do this in other cities like Dar es Salaam and, and other places. Um, yeah, um, that's basically it for the basic concept of Tracker City. You see the rest of the, the company, um, 35 people. It's a funny bunch and yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> You in the back, please. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually what then comes back from the app. So we, we source. Oh yeah, um, so the question is how do we get the data um, who wants to go to the airport? So we call this the demand data. We always say the supply and demand data. And yeah, this is something we get back from the app. So after we do track your city as a project, we launch the app in the city and then run it for one month, for two months. And then we get this data where we learn from here to here and people wanna go. And this is how we start to learn how the city works. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's um, a really important topic. Right now, we, we generate static data, and we put it also in the app like this. It's static data. Um, 
um, I know it's not ideal, but it's the first step that we um, can do. Um, people are quite surprised. There is no Google Maps or anything like this, so they do appreciate that, and I think it, it's helping them. But that will be the next step then. So when you launch the app, you can use sensors in the app to get real-time data. Um, but that's then the next step, and it's quite tricky. Um, you guys, please. <laughs> Um, so in the first phase, um, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um, so the question is, if we launch these buses ourselves, or if we work with the public transport companies, um, in the first phase in Berlin, we launch them ourselves. So it will kind of work like Uber Pool, but that's just for us to learn how it works. In the long run, we don't want to just throw another product into the market. We really want to work with the public transport companies and improve their system. And yeah, so we talk, especially in Germany, to a lot of public transport companies. And we want to do it with them. We don't want to provide cars and hire drivers. That's not so much our interest. We rather want to um, generate data and understand how the city works and then advise public transport companies how to do it. Yes. Yeah, um, that's something we play with right now on these time windows. How long are people willing to take a detour and stuff? Um, right now, we work with five people in, in one car. Um, but this, we depend, it depends from city to city. So in Dar es Salaam, people are, might be willing to, to wait longer because they have a two-hour commute. And if we can reduce it by one hour, um, that's already a big step. And this obviously also then depends on how expensive the bus will be. Um, the initial inspiration for this on-demand transport were really the, the Dala Dalas in Dar es Salaam or in, in Mexico, the, the minibuses in Mexico City, um, because they already work like this in a way. And we just want to make it a little bit more digital and bring this concept also to Berlin, which doesn't have it. Yes, you, please. Yeah, so I repeat the question. The, the question is if we, if I, I think that two questions, um, if, we, if there's GTFS available, if we can use this. And then the second question is if, if we can generate GTFS out of the, the data we produce. Um, so if there's GTFS available, we don't run Track Your City. Um, we just use it as it is. Um, because what we do actually is um, we run Track Your City, put the data into OpenStreetMap, export it, and generate GTFS. Um, so that's what we do then on our side as a company. Um, but Track Your City as a project itself stops or is fulfilled once the data is in OpenStreetMap. It's kind of how we structured it now for now. Yeah, we don't generate GTFS. Does this answer your question? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yes, please. Hello, I, I am a tree. I'm in, in Pellet. So I have uh, Uber app. Uber, Uber app, Uber app at open trade map. So I enjoyed you take carpool, carpool much cheaper. If I save a lot of money, if uh, looking for driver, then I got actually one uh, Uber carpool. So it is 50% cheaper than regular taxi. Yeah. Um. You're right. Um. So Uber pool is very similar what we are aiming for. Um. The difference is that we want to improve the current public transport system and not necessarily target the taxi market and add a new product. We rather want to find the weak spots in the current public transport system and then trying to improve this with an on-demand service. And Uber is also not active in Africa right now, which um, yeah might change soon. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry? Okay. How do you plan to work with that? So you need uh, quite a big volume to get lots of people using these applications. 
Yeah, the question is, um, um, the, the business model requires a lot of users to, in order to get the insights. Um, this depends from city to city. So to launch an app like this in Berlin, is yeah, you have to do a lot of marketing. There's high competition. Um, in Berlin, we have the advantage. We are the locals, so we can really make it perfect. So we can be better than Google. And we can really localize it. Um, if we would launch this in New York, which we don't do, we probably would waste all our money on marketing. In Africa and South America, it's very different because there's simply no competition. No one has this data. Google doesn't have the data. So we basically don't even need marketing then to get people on board. Um, it's one of the reasons why we're interested in this area. Um, you, please. Um, how, do, how do we earn money? Interesting question. So right now we are a startup. Um, we do not earn money right now. Um, in the long run, we, the app itself will always stay for free. Um, how we want to earn money is by selling um, the data and also the, the algorithms to public transport companies. So we want to consult them on how they run their public transport system. And yeah, so we work very closely already with the BVG in Berlin and, and these kind of companies. Um, do we still have time for one more question? One more, okay. Yeah. Um, so the question is how we store the data in OpenStreetMap itself. Um, so bus routes are relations. Um, they're relations of ways of the roads. And, but they can, if they are only stops, you can also make a relation out of simply the stops. Um, but this is a huge discussion. There are also two versions in OpenStreetMap of public transport. Um, um, very interesting. Uh, in Dar es Salaam, we, we made simply relations um, of, of ways, and we don't have bus stops in there, so in the first phase, yeah. You don't have bus stops? In, in Dar es Salaam right now, not. Um, it would be an additional tracking effort. Um, so what we did there, um, we, we interpolate them. So every 100 meters, we create a bus stop, and that works quite well. In other cities, in Lusaka, um, we did source the bus stops. Um, but our system already works without bus stops. Um, ideally, we also get the bus stops in there, yeah, but it's a lot of manual work. And uh, the volunteers, once they have, see something in the app, they're kind of happy, and then it, it fades away. So it's, it's also one of the challenges that we work with to keep the, keep the volunteers motivated. And in the end, it's their project. It, sometimes they're really motivated and then want to get all the bus stops in there and then even continuing editing OpenStreetMap. But sometimes it fades away quickly. Yeah. All right, thank you.